Hey guys, today I'm going to be going over five mistakes that you should avoid if you plan on running the D&D 5th edition module Waterdeep Dragon Heist. Wizards of the Coast can't fit everything into every module, so this isn't a direct criticism of the book itself. This video is designed to help DMs, especially newer DMs, into avoiding pitfalls that I made when I ran this campaign. Number one too many factions. There's a giant list of NPCs and factions that are available for you to give to your players. But there are so many of them that trying to incorporate all of them at once is going to make things complicated and convoluted and hard to follow. There's at least four or five villain factions and several good factions and some in between that you can choose from. My recommendation, pick a villain faction and pick a couple of good factions to go around that villain. Speaking of villains, that brings me to my second mistake. Mistake number two is not introducing the villain fast enough. How cool is it that in the original Star Wars, you get to see the villain, Darth Vader, almost right off the bat. You see him in the first 10 minutes of the movie. It gives you an understanding of who you're up against. Now it's hard to do this if you pick Xanathar as the villain but maybe some of his high-ranking henchmen could stand in it instead. And for the other villains, there's ways to introduce them in non-combat scenarios that will give you a chance to introduce them without the players killing themselves on a challenge rating 15 baddie. Mistake number three, not giving enough direction. Yes, this is a big city. There's plenty to see and plenty to do. Your players could go anywhere, but that's the problem. If you don't give them enough direction, they're gonna flounder about wondering where their next assignment is in this giant city. Make sure that you leave them enough clues or that you have NPCs like Renair with the Harpers or something to lead them in the right direction. You don't have to show them exactly where you're going, but you just need to give them enough clues to get them to your destination. Mistake number four is not having an actual heist. This is called Dragon Heist after all, and this is a huge mistake that I made when I ran the campaign. It's called Dragon Heist. There's no heists to be seen. That I am criticizing Watsi on, all right? and you will be seeing my complaint letter very soon. I should have added a few heists, and there's a website that's just dedicated to improving this module and includes several heists of itself. Check the link in the description to get to the alexandrian.net. And finally, mistake number five is keeping the vault as is. Sure, 500,000 gold dragons is super cool, but the adult gold dragon guarding it seemingly just because, and the players who have no chance of fighting him, and so they have to just hope that they can persuade him into letting them have it? That doesn't make any sense to me. There's plenty that can change here, but what I did was I made the dragon bound by the staff of Agaron. The same staff that keeps dragons out of the city keeps this dragon inside the vault. Dagle Neverember was a very clever man, and surely there's ways he could trick a dragon into guarding his vault for him forever. That's the other thing is if you end this campaign around level five, as I said, the players have no chance of defeating this dragon. I recommend using a young gold dragon instead. This would also help explain how Never Ember was able to trick a dragon into doing his bidding. And that's all five. Please let me know in the comments if you think I've missed anything. And if you liked this video, please consider liking and subscribing if you wanna see more like it in the future.